around housing. So looking at housing as a health issue. And uh, this is showing that there is poor housing. And housing is where we drink water. That's where we get our water, right? And you're seeing from this very high percentage of people drinking from pails in Garden Hill First Nation. So this research was done by an access student actually in employment training who um, was part of our Boreal Home Builders. But it was absolutely organized, surveyed by the community. I didn't have a say in questions, I didn't fund it. And uh, she won against all the postdocs, everyone uh, at an H2O conference. So it's amazing, she went and did a census basically, 384 houses, and this is what she found, is that uh, not only here we have water, but sewer, 21% do not have uh, pipes and must dump it out their backyard. And there are really uh, negative health consequences of that. Her survey also looked at youth statistics for employment and found that very, very high youth employment, unemployment, higher than actually elders. So this is an area that had, uh, you know, really requires looking at. And this was pre our, um, our engagement as a partnership. So I will uh, now show you a present a short video, it's only three minutes, that profiles our partnership and what we're doing in communities and how we're working with communities to design housing and, um, and, and build capacity and build housing. So this is a slide by Shauna Mallory Hill who couldn't be here today, but she shows the process that the students are engaged in. So they design this work in a participatory workshop. Uh, they're managing the forest. They learn forest management and logged, and as well learn saw milling so that they can use the local wood as part of a house construction or home construction. And the further part of this is that they're learning um, math, they're learning all sorts of skills to apply to, if, if people want to go for apprenticeship, they get that opportunity to advance to the next level. So they're learning house building skills with local materials. And this is the first version of the house that was come up with. Based, so it's trying to use as much wood as possible to uh, account for 60, 70% of the volume of the house. Uh, of course, some things we have to get in and we'll be using a metal roof. And it, it includes the designs like the wood stove that was mentioned, like the um, big room in the center, and entrance ways that are verandas that are enclosed. So there's a, 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 a kind of a, a, a distance or a, a piece where you can do outside stuff that's um, before you get inside, so a protected area. So the partners are designing homes with communities and considering what, uh, what's important from the community and looking at the designs in the community and the traditions in the communities and what worked in the past for that climate and considering sustainability. So uh, houses in the past with different foundations lasted a lot longer. So foundations are a key aspect of this and we haven't completely cracked that nut yet. So that'll be version two and version three, but we're working on it and seeing what's possible. We have, uh, out of this, we've looked at the forest and we're, um, we're, we're looking at how to manage that forest for the community, but that also leads into a, a bid for territory of land guardianship as well. So it is a good claim, a big claim on the resources in the area so it can't be taken over by others. And part of that is not just on the reserve, but getting the timber rights for the whole, their territory, which, which they have as part of this. So we, um, I helped apply for a community futures grant with both Garden Hill, and that's a story that maybe I'm going to talk about, and with Sagamac. So with Sagamac has started a housing and sawmill corporation. We're intent with them to help them get core, which is the construction safety, so they can apply for federal housing funding and actually 
you know, use local companies to keep the money in the community. Because what's happening right now is that companies who are very racist are coming in and not hiring their workers. And all the money is being flown out of the community. So the, uh, I have a picture of Larry Harper. He's a Red Seal Construction, so he's the manager in place. He just started as of January, I'm so excited. And he also has a, a third level electrician, which for their area is sufficient to do everything. So it's quite exciting. And um, the other aspect of this then is students. And uh, Jide talked a little bit this morning about their many achievements. So we realize that people have chaotic lives and they can't always see something through. But we want to leave each student with as much uh, as much potential to get a job, to feel good about their process, that they're not, if they have to drop out, they're not losing out. And so we've had, as part of it, this 18 month uh, forestry and carpentry uh, um, training program, we have certificates on an ongoing basis. So they walk away, no matter where they are, every student who's entered our doors has walked away with a good certificate and many who had to drop out because they were kicked out of the community for something, or they, you know, they're having their seventh kid, and, and, and which is the case for a woman there, and so is no longer working, um, is they have real skills that they can pass on, and they can get jobs when they come, if they have to come to Winnipeg, we found that we provide them with the certificates and they get jobs right away, and good paying jobs. So that's success, and we see three groups, really. The people who are trying it out, right? And, and um, there's a group of that, especially in the segment, there were very young students. They didn't know what carpentry and forestry was. They went into the program, and it wasn't maybe for them, but they got some certificates out of it. Then there was a second group, which was either interested in forestry or carpentry. So some walked away with forestry, and. Those people say, yeah, I'm, I'm no longer working, but I can go out and get wood, and there's a market in our community. I can sell that wood. So and they have all this, um, the safety aspects and the forest management skills to do it right. And we have the timber so they can do it off reserve, timber permit. And then the third group is people who are committed to the whole process. So they've got the forestry, they've got the carpentry, and they're gonna apply for permission at the end. So, so one group is either carpentry or forestry, and so it's showing up in the number of certificates they obtain. Uh, um, so people will walk away with 15 certificates if they see the whole thing through, right? Which is very, very good um, to, for competencies, to show competencies to employers, to, to show competencies to the band to get on the um, housing. So. Most of this grant is a partnership grant, and it's mainly going to the community members. So this idea that SHRC is for graduate students only can be challenged and should be challenged. So this is going to entry level ones that are going to colleges, or in this case, a First Nations Training Institute. So 70, 80% of the funds are going directly into the communities, to people in Garden Hill, to people in Wasagamack, to those students, and, and um, the communities are directly benefiting from this research, as well as graduate students who you will meet later today, who are the architects, who are the, uh, the uh, community developers who are working alongside. So right now, I think we're into the two and a half, third, two and a half year, and um, we've spent uh, maybe not even $1,000, and most of it is in the community. So the feedback we're getting is that they really love it. There's so many comments about social, that it really opened them up socially. In these communities, there is nothing to do. There is no community center, that's community center. There is the school, but it's not always opened up to people after post-secondary. So for post-secondary students, and I asked them, I have lots of videos of them saying, yeah, I go to my friend's house, if it's 40 below, and you know, we hang out outside for a bit, and then I go home after half an hour, because there's nothing to do in the community. So this is really creating a social hub for them, 
Um, and so almost every student remarked about that. And there's just inclusion of some of that. But opening up around um, people facing their fears that there is income, it's not a huge amount, but what we were able to do was we were able to get welfare um, not impacted by the training allowance, which was so important. If we want mothers with seven kids, if we want you know, husbands with kids in the pro program, we really need to get that agreement. And it was a struggle. We thought we were going to lose that, but we wrote to IDAC and they agreed that we will not take any funding money off um, the welfare or employment insurance from the training allowance. I had to justify it and, you know, based on lots of things, transportation, etc., that they need lots of equipment throughout. So it allows some funding and a reward. We found we were providing a training stipend which didn't always make people want to come to work, right? Because they got it no matter what. And so we implemented a, re a reward system and wow, did that ever click in. And the reward was you come nine to five, five days a week and you get double the pay. So, you know, we could implement that um, on top of our training allowance and, and give that. And so we had almost perfect attendance in uh, November and December. We wish we had thought of it earlier, but it was really this research saying people can't pay their bills. People are having, you know, trouble paying for their food that made us change it, right? And uh, it's really, really, really working. People are incited to come. But we are still finding that um, it, uh, even our students don't have stable housing, right? 60% don't have stable housing. So that's something this program is really working towards. And we're seeing, and this is my last slide, is that housing is community, healing, and economic renewal. Um, Nick, what?